Welcome to the third keynote session of today, Discover Your Own Path. As kids, we all dreamt of what we wanted to be when we grow up. But we actually came of age and understood that we had to pay bills and balance life challenges. Things changed. But what if someone said to us, if you can imagine it, then it is possible. What if we could make our own path? What if we actually could find the courage, a voice to ask for what we deserve? Wouldn't life be different? To help us discover our own path, we have with us today Kelly Kuhn, who's a special advisor to the CWT leadership team, reporting directly to the president and the CEO of CWT. In her role, Kelly provides advice, coaching, mentorship to the CEO, executive leadership team, and key executive across the company. And most recently, she also served as CWT's chief customer officer. Kelly, welcome to Women Empowerment Forum Global 2020. Hi there, everyone. So great to be with you. I feel like you've transported me back to Singapore, so it's awesome. So Kelly, you have 32 years of work experience within corporate sector where you've not only grown through various ranks, but also managed, mentored, coach teams across regions, cultures, organizational structures. What would you say have been the top three things that worked for you over the years? And is it the same advice that you would give others? It's a great question. Hard to narrow down to three, but let me take a stab. And depending upon how clear of a monitor you have, and Nira, you and I haven't even talked about this, um, you might notice that I have some super red skin on my forehead. Um, I have a lot of skin cancer in my family. Certainly living in Asia in the sunshine didn't help. Um, I'm undergoing some pre-skin cancer treatment, and I had started this treatment before you invited me to join. And the reason this is important is that I imagine you all would have said, oh goodness, Kelly could have canceled, we would have understood. But today participating, being with all of you is just simply too important. And I raise this now as the first example of a life lesson, a leadership lesson, a career lesson. And that is being comfortable, being uncomfortable. It's so important in our career, in our life, to allow yourself to acknowledge that you simply don't know everything, to be vulnerable, to know that you need to learn. Acknowledging that uncomfortableness is so liberating. And in fact, it, it sort of brought, I was, as I was listening to the earlier speaker, it's acknowledging that. It's so important to be uncomfortable. It's really where putting yourself in situations that are uncomfortable, that's what stretches our abilities. It's challenging the way we've led in the past and opening our mind and our heart to new ways of doing things. And so that uncomfortable situation is where we learn. It's where the best learning comes from. The second um, lesson, I think, is that that uncomfortable position allows that vulnerability, which I certainly feel today, right? We all have a little vanity and that's okay. But it forces us, I think, being vulnerable to listen first. This skill in leading and showing up as a leader really will endear you to your teams. Their value is highlighted. It's on display. Their voice is being heard. Make sure that as a leader, um, you have shared with your teams and accept as well in your own life that making a mistake is okay and again, that's where the best learning comes from, in those mistakes. The most valuable asset you have as a leader is to fully examine and exploit almost the unique experiences of your teams and to provide them an environment where a diverse set of views and opinions will be heard. That is where, again, the best ideas, the best learning, and where the future gets developed. And then lastly, we all need to have courage. Courageous leaders have a strong belief that they can make a difference, that that adversity will enable learning 
and therefore expecting collaboration from our teams, from everyone we interact with, that collaboration is truly the only way to breed success. Insist on it. My team probably is pro tired, has been tired of hearing me talk about it for years and years. Insist on collaboration and that's what builds trust ultimately in your team. And as you as a leader, make sure that your teams know you've got their back no matter what, that you will support them on their journey as well. Kelly, you made a point about um, the vulnerability and being uncomfortable. Now, you've obviously been a leader throughout. Now, as a leader, would you show your vulnerability or the fact that you're, uh, you know, the discomfort or not knowing because wouldn't that uh, make you seem weak? In fact, I think that it's just the opposite. Um, showing that vulnerability and that you're willing to listen, especially to other points of view, which has really rewarded me throughout my career, moving from the United States, living in Asia Pacific for five years, now being based in London, traveling around the world. Listening is such an important, um, important component of leadership. And even if you're not a leader, you're part of a team. And so listening first is so important. And I think that showing that vulnerability shows how human you are and that people will take notice because it's unusual, right? Most people, men and women, feel that they need that bravado, that they need to stand out. And that's true. And there's always opportunity for that. But I think that just the opposite, the quiet, calm leadership of influence especially when you're working to advance your career, is actually a stronger uh, impact than it is to constantly be making sure your voice is the only one heard in the room. That's a great point. Uh, and the other thing you talked about was courage. Now, uh, courage, again, means different things to different people. But, you know, as women, we um, historically, we... Uh, we're not very good at advocating ourselves. We don't have the courage to influence other people or promote ourselves. We want to always downplay. So where do we find this courage? How do we make sure that, again, you spoke about your voice being heard. Yes, we've listened, but now we want our voice to be heard. How do we do that without uh, looking as, you know, somebody who's overbearing sort of a person? Indeed. And we know this, women often here, and I imagine throughout all of the sessions over the next three days, we're going to hear that um, this notion that women are too emotional, right? And so if we are strong in our beliefs and our conviction, some people interpret that as being too emotional, when in fact, it's just the opposite. I think that simply put, um, as you said, having courage, having a seat at the table, isn't enough. We need to also have a voice at the table. And the first step in having that voice as I talk, I, as I mentioned, is listening first and then being really clear also on how others receive information. You know, sometimes we can have an opinion, an idea, a way forward, but if others aren't actually hearing us, our ideas are lost. And so it's really important that how others receive our information, how they interpret our information, that is what's so important to make sure that your voice, your expertise, your experience has a voice at that table and that others are actually hearing you, listening to you and absorbing it. I would also say that advocacy for ourselves, but advocacy from others, and this is where men and women come together. We all have mentors, coaches in our careers. I have been blessed with extraordinary mentorship and coaching uh, throughout my career. But advocacy and sponsorship is actually different. And I would say that we need to each seek out advocates on our behalf as well. That is such a powerful voice, someone that you worked with, someone who was on your team, someone who was your boss in the past, a customer, a vendor. Their advocacy can come in lots of ways. And then when others are also sponsoring or advocating on your behalf, imagine the power 
the combination, the courage that that gives you to advocate for yourself alongside other voices that are advocating for you as well. I want to go back on what you're talking about, you know, finding the seat at the table and also having a voice. You, uh, you, you, you're at the table, right? You're sitting right now at the table, uh, you know, uh, with all the big boys. So just say you've been able to find that seat. And yes, Kelly, everybody who knows you knows that you've got that voice. But um, I, I, again, I'm sure that there, there had to be certain challenges like the phenomena of the glass ceiling, especially for women in the corporate sector, it's not unknown. And somewhere along the line, many of us have felt it, experienced it, or at least heard of it. Now, how did you manage to do this? You know, it's, I, you are exactly right. It, 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 to not acknowledge it would be a mistake. It absolutely exists. And in many cases in my career, I've been the only woman in the room, and I'll give a few examples. I have been incredibly fortunate. Um, so many opportunities in my career, as you mentioned, th almost 32 years. By the way, that makes me feel really old. 32 years is a really long time. Um, so many opportunities have been presented to me during my career that created a path that I could have never imagined. And what I would, my first piece of advice is take the chance. Even if the path seems unusual. When I was living in Chicago, starting out my career, I was an individual contributor for many years. But I made sure that I put myself into positions to learn from other leaders that I respected. And also at the same time, made sure that my results, what I promised and delivered on those promises, spoke for itself. So when I was living in Chicago, when the opportunity presented itself, when I was asked to move to Washington, D.C. And, and lead our military and government business, I remember thinking, I don't know anything about government contracting, government travel. That's exactly why the company wanted me to go, because it would be a fresh pair of eyes. I could have said no, because it was going to be scary. It was going to be uncomfortable. I had no idea what I was doing, but I took the leap. And that presented an opportunity then for me to have a new voice and a new seat at the table. And I will tell you, in the government, in the military especially, most of the time, I was the only woman in, at the table, in the room. And most of the time then, facts spoke louder than words. Delivering on fact-based, having fact-based decisions, having fact-based advice, key performance indicators, using data to, to reinforce my message always made a difference. And I think that that's something important for everyone to learn, that we can have opinions and a voice, but having the facts and the data to back it up really makes folks stand up and, and pay attention, so to speak. Again, when I was asked to move to Asia, to move to Singapore, to lead an extraordinary diverse group of folks across the entire region, it had never crossed my mind. But again, I said, you know what? This is an opportunity I'll never have again. I'm going to take the leap. And that's where the best learning, the best um, opportunities came for me and experiencing my life and my career in a completely new way. And then I was asked again, and I will tell you that not always saying yes makes sense for us personally. In fact, the first time I was asked to move to Singapore, I said no, because my partner had just built a business. But the great news is that one of my incredible advocates and sponsors and coaches and mentors, my boss, kept at me, kept coming back and saying, I really need you to do this. He did it again when he asked me to move to London, first with my Europe team and then globally. And so I think that the message here is that Delivering on what we promise, having an opinion and a strong voice, listening, but also having those opinions backed up with data and facts, I think it's an incredibly powerful combination to make sure that your voice at the table is heard and that there isn't a glass ceiling. Now, the last thing I will say is if that ceiling exists, if it's simply not possible to break through it and 
that exists in many organizations. And that's why I think inclusion and diversity, women, culture, all of these things are such an important topic in so many boardrooms today with so many executive teams. Everybody's talking about this because it does exist. I would ask you to think about yourself. Think about um, what's important to you. What's important, your personal values. You need to make sure that you're in an organization that matches your personal values. And sometimes it just doesn't exist where you are and you need to have that courage to step out and find something new. Also, I just wanted everyone to know um, what I quoted earlier was something you told me your father had said. If you can imagine it, then it's possible. That's exactly right. My dad is an extraordinary guy. He's 90 years old this year. Um, in fact, something I posted on LinkedIn recently, um, which there have been a lot of comments about when I, I wrote a post about leadership and why right now during COVID-19 and the crisis the world is, is going through, why leadership is more important than ever. And my dad would say to you, there's a reason that the rear view mirror in your car is very small and that the windshield is vast and big. There's simply no reason to look backwards. The only opportunity we can see is by looking forward. A lot of people who are here today and of course people that you know especially joy to listen to you definitely think that you've been successful and um, you're kind of a role model for a lot of people who follow you so how do you define success for yourself how do you define success and how do you think other women should define success for themselves you know it's a such a critical question and at such an important time right now more than ever um, it, it, making sure that we have invested ourselves, our, our time, our, um, our purpose really uh, into what we're doing. Um, it's so important to know what makes us happy. Well, how do we define sex, success? And I think that everyone's reflecting on that right now. We, this gift of time is precious. Let's make sure that we are investing it in a way that gives us satisfaction and joy. As I mentioned earlier, um, I've always found the greatest success and satisfaction for myself in the success of my teams, in those around me. When they're being successful, that's where I get the greatest satisfaction. Um, I think as leaders, but more importantly as human beings, this is, this is our greatest opportunity to you know, make an impact, leave the world in a little bit better place than we found it. Um, knowing that my teams and the people around me have been successful, Nara, you're a great example of that. Knowing that you, that you have been successful, this is um, what I think is my legacy. It's so important that you ask yourself, what truly motivates me? Where do I find the most satisfaction? What impact do I want to make? What do others say about me when I'm not in the room? And I think that real leaders, real leadership, Regardless of whether or not you lead teams, you have an opportunity to influence people in your everyday life, in your family, in everyone you come in contact with. Courageous leaders, especially women, who folks are looking up to for guidance and, and to put your arms around others as caregivers, especially in so many families, in so many communities. We real leaders, courageous leaders, are women of true character. And they inspire because of that character each and every day. And I think that, that we are defined um, because we have actions and behaviors that are worthy of being followed. Others looking up to us, others wanting to have a successful path because of something we said to them or some way we inspired them. And so I, that's what success is for me, finding a team and people that I can influence in a positive way that then find their own success. Great point. And I love the point about legacy because that is really important what we leave behind. That's exactly correct. And um, so what makes an effective leader? Well, goodness, there's been a, a, a lot of books and a lot of folks talk about that, right? 
Um, I mean, I hope that some of the things that I've shared, um, strong, courageous leaders absolutely are willing to surround themselves with people who are smarter than they are. Not being afraid. You know, this has been one of my keys to success throughout my career, knowing when, if you're the smartest person in the room, that's not leadership. You really want to bring people around you that help prop you up and help you to be successful. Smarter people than you are empowering. That's what we need to be focused on. Um, and also, such an important characteristic of strong leadership is being willing to make a mistake. And that leads back to that being uncomfortable position. You know, not everybody's willing to make a mistake and they'll keep going at it even though that mistake is truly the best opportunity for learning. Where we make a mistake and just acknowledge it and then embrace it and know that we're gonna do it better next time. And then if you're a leader of a team, making sure that your team knows that making a mistake is actually not just okay, but it's expected, and that they will then drive the solutions and be better the next time. It's such an empowering component of leadership. Um, and then as I talked about just a moment ago, this, comp this, this value system and character. In the end, strong, successful leadership is based on character and doing the right thing. Those are, um, that is a component where people want to follow you, where they're inspired by you, where they believe that anything is possible. Now we've got a few more questions that have come up and I really do want to ask those questions. Uh, um, somebody has said, uh, Kelly, you've always been very inspiring, but do you have an example of when you do not feel good enough for a situation and how did you manage that? And the person asking is Pernilla. Ah, it's a great question. Um, and I've had many, many, many of those examples um, in my career. And you know what I always found um, were the times that I didn't trust my inner voice. Mm -hmm. And some would call it your gut, right? That, that, that you know what the right thing to do is, but somehow you're doubting yourself. And it was those times spanning across my entire career where I would then ultimately make a mistake and know that then I needed to change course, not trusting that inner voice. The other thing I would say is that um, I did feel early in my career that I needed to kind of, you know, make a name for yourself, always being, quote, the smartest person in the room. And you know what? I think that successful people obviously are, are of great intellect. They're very smart. They're studied. They read a lot. They experience a lot. However, being the smartest person in the room does not make you an effective leader. I think that leadership comes from, as I mentioned at the very beginning, listening first. I was often asked um, um, during my time in Asia Pacific, Kelly, how did, how did you, you know, drive such an inclusive culture when these were all new cultures from India to China to New Zealand and everything in between? And what I, I, I think what I did, I hope what I did successfully, and we could ask our teams across APAC the question, but I listened first. And I found so quickly where there was this extraordinary um, uh, teams of, of leaders themselves and experts themselves. Surround yourself with really smart people. They will make you proud and they will help you be successful in turn. How do you make people understand that our being vulnerable is okay, which is something that you answered, but there's an interesting part of the question where she's saying, how do we put across vulnerability as a concept to others? As they don't really understand the concept and specifically coming from women, men would generally end up judging us for being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's a really great question. And honestly, not everyone that you come into contact with is going to accept it, right? They, are, they simply won't um, and they may misinterpret it. And that's where your, our ability to read the situation 
to really, uh, you know, we, ha we often talk about women's intuition, use that to your advantage. You might often experience a room, an environment where you see that it's not being successful. But I will tell you that in my experience, 90% of the time, that vulnerability is endearing. And, and actually acknowledging it. I would, have, I would have thought, think about today, if you can see this horrible redness on my forehead right now, we might have spent the last 25, 30 minutes together and you might have felt uncomfortable because you would see it and you wouldn't know what it was about. And so I decided to talk about it because I hope that it means that I'm comfortable enough with you. I trust all of you enough to be vulnerable. And I think that the best way, the only way truly, is for that to be a successful characteristic of me, is to lead by example. Others will feel comfortable to do the same, and I've been shocked and surprised in my career. Men, as much as women, mm -hmm. showing vulnerability if you give them an environment where that is okay. But you've got to create that environment for that to work. Thank you, Kelly, so much for such a candid discussion. And I'm sure everybody who's watching you and listening to you is going to go back more inspired, motivated, and most of all, courageous to Thank take you. charge of our life. Um, and uh, yeah, any last words of wisdom you want to leave our audiences with? You know what I will, the last thing I will say is, it's so important for each of us, especially now, to find the things in our life, personally and professionally, that inspire us. Because we need extra energy, right? We need, we need to show up in new and unique ways. We're doing this all virtually, rather than when I would be, you know, addressing this group of extraordinary women in an audience where we get, you know, immediate feedback. Find the things in your life, and I know you're gonna have lots of conversation about this over the next couple of days, Find the important things in your life that give you energy and inspire you. Um, because honestly, it, 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 we, we simply could not have imagined the world in which we live in today. So true. And so it's more important now than ever that we seize each moment and again, live in a way that others would want to emulate us and find the things that inspire you and give you energy. For everybody, we've shared Kelly's details on the chat group. So if you wanted to reach out to her, uh, you know, ask her about how she does things or want her to be a mentor or anything else, uh, please do get in touch with her. She'd be more than happy to help out or guide um, and, of course, motivate. And um, hopefully she's also coming back for the networking session later today at 6 p.m. Singapore and Hong Kong time. Please do check the timings in your time zone uh, before you join in. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome, Mira. So great to see you and wonderful to be with everyone. See you shortly. Mm -hmm.